This is me on my T7 project bike, sideways, scared, and loving it. This hill was steep enough that I was genuinely having to talk myself into it. The bike ate it alive. The whole goal of this project is to make stuff like this easy, to see if I can make a T7 great off-road and then see what the limit is for me, a normal person. In episode one, I started with all the basics, protection parts, nice to haves, and the things that would make it fit me better. But now it's time to get to the good stuff, ripping big hills and doing wheelies. Welcome to episode two of the Project Bike series. In this episode, the idea is that we're gonna change the fueling by adding a fuel controller and then change the power by adding an exhaust with that fuel controller and doing it sequentially to see what the difference each of those products makes and what happens to the Tenere when you do that. My chosen fuel controller is the Rapid Bike Evo by Dim Sport. It's a fuel controller with a little extra power. It uses a piggyback wiring harness to use the existing sensors on the bike and provides the ability to rewrite the standard fuel map. It's also using all of the major sensors on the bike, the injectors, the crank sensor, the throttle position sensor, and the O2 sensor. And it uses that O2 Lambda sensor to its advantage and can work when the ECU is both closed loop and open loop. On top of that, it has a clever auto mapping feature that rewrites the fueling and the ignition map as you ride based on all of the parameters it can measure. I fitted the Rapid Bike Evo in the garage in the UK before we headed to Portugal. The process of fitting isn't simple, but it also isn't anywhere near as complex as I thought it would be. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's a fuel tank off job on the T7, and that's the trickiest bit. Getting the Rapid Bike's wiring loom fitted up was surprisingly easy. All of the wires are labeled and the connectors match up with the original connectors. You need a place to house the ECU itself and it also wires up to the battery for power. I was pretty intimidated by this job, but fortunately the instructions are really clear. I hadn't done any work to this depth on the T7, but the whole process took about an hour to do while ambling around the garage with a camera. The trickiest part is without doubt the tank removal and fitting. The actual process itself isn't difficult. It's just got a ton of bolts that are all different and remembering where they go was hard for my brain. If you're a more competent mechanic than me, you could probably do it in about half an hour. I'd give it a three out of five on Revzilla's bid scale. So this is my first time riding this bike since I have made the majority of the changes to it. One of the things I have found with the Tenere 700 in the past when I've ridden it is that I find it to be a bike that is quite finicky when it comes to setup. The, the better you get the balance of the bike, the, the better it works essentially so it'll handle much nicer on the road it'll handle much nicer off-road if the front to back balance is right and if that's out it really doesn't deal with it well and like any bike getting the riding position dialed in getting the controls in the right position for how everything works makes a really big difference so that's what we're going to try and do today we came to portugal for the sun but it is it's just started raining and i'm a bit confused weather the first few days was awful. Heavy rain, paint, there was no filming with my main camera, but I did a ton of riding and fettling. I rode with the instructors from Off-Road Skills a lot for the first couple of days, and then Luce came out to help film and shoot some more Mini Tip Mondays. Along the way, I worked on suspension settings, balance, and getting the clutch arm from Alt Rider working well so that the bike was good. When we first plugged in the Dim Sport, somehow the autonomous mode was turned off. So for the first two days, I didn't really know what was going on. There isn't any great manual system, so I ended up giving them a call and asking them how it works. How do I do this? I downloaded the software. I needed a Windows laptop to do that. Tiny bit irritating because I don't use Windows myself. A lot of people don't use Windows. Had to ask a friend, plug his laptop in, fiddle with it. And then we started to see benefits from it massively. So in this monumentally slippery riverbed that I've chosen to ride down, 
Let me have a think about this. Woo! I finally got it into the right mode and immediately it started to change the characteristics of the bike, the way it's fueling. Sorry, this is so slow, slippery as hell. The problem is when you need a dab in here, it's so bloody slippery. Fueling a bike, whether it's a carburetor or a what sunshine, it's the first time in a while. Irrespective of whether it's fuel injected or carburetted is not a simple process. If you're not using a dyno, it takes a lot of trial and error and feel and working out what's going on. If you are using a dyno, that costs a fair bit of money. And so the idea with the Rapid Bike Evo is that it's gonna do both of those things for you using its autonomous mode called, what's it called again? Auto adaptive mode, I think it's called. That's the idea anyway. And the reality is you can feel it working. Across a single day of riding, you can feel it changing what the fuel map is as you ride. It constantly improves and improves and improves. And you have these moments when you're riding where little glitches before that you'd become accustomed to suddenly disappear. And that's the point where you notice it happening. It's really good. It's not night and day on the Tenere. I think on some bikes it probably would be, but the fueling on the Tenere out of the box is good enough that it isn't a night and day thing just bolting on, but it is an improvement. And I think you're gonna get more benefit the more you do with it and the more you add to your bike as you go. The software is a big part of the package with the Rapid Bike. It comes with a custom map for your bike built in, as well as that auto feature, but you can also tune this yourself. You can write maps, or you can set the fuel air ratio of the auto map yourself. It's a really fun thing to be able to do to gain small tweaks or try small changes, but I also managed to make the bike super lean and much harder to ride. Eventually, I put it back to the full stock auto setting and was really happy. It's worth noting, it does now use a fair bit more fuel and the fuel economy was less consistent. I made a few changes to the bike in the garage last night. Probably too many changes to make at any one time. And they made a really big difference to how rideable it is. The first one is a change the clutch arm, the old rider clutch arm to the middle position. And then we richened the fueling up massively. We put it back to the stock 13.2 fueling uh, that Dim Sport recommend in the Rapid Bike Evo. And it has made this Tenere so damn nice to, uh, to ride. I can't see anything up here. And then the third part is we move the clamp, the forks down through the clamps to rake the bike out a bit more. And it's helped with the balance of it enormously. Oh, Tenere, I love how gentle you are off the bottom end. It's like silk, it's almost unstallable now. After three full days riding with just the Dim Sport on the T7, I had a decent understanding of his change to the bike. I could have done way more, but the time wasn't unlimited. The next step was to fit an exhaust system. The exhaust I went for is a really popular one for the T7, the Yoshimura RS12 stainless steel system. It's a beautiful thing. And honestly, I was terrified of scratching it. With how nice the fit and finish of the RS12 is, I thought it would be an easy fit. Honestly, this thing is really nice in real life. The stock exhaust system came off effortlessly, but fitting the Yoshi headers back on was super tight. <laughs> Should have washed it. Wash the bike, kids. <laughs> classically trained in exhaust pipes. Oh. <laughs> when I was trying to mount the header pipes up, they were too close together, so I had to spread them apart with a fair amount of force to get them to mount up to the engine. Once they were on, everything else fitted up and lined up exactly. The whole fitting process was about 40 minutes, with a good chunk of that involving confusion as to how to get the headers into place. I'd give it a two out of five difficulty. 
Over the next four days, I rode the bike a ton more and learned a lot about it. I tested the rapid bike and the Yoshi together at different air fuel ratios. I went quite lean and it became aggressive, peaky and tricky to ride. It was fun, but it needed way more skill than I have. You can see this in this clip as I struggled not to spin the rear wheel. I always ended up back at 13.2 as the best setting. And with the two products together, honestly, it's something special to ride. The idea with this exhaust system is that it's gonna give us a chunk more power and a chunk more torque on paper, but I think in reality, what it's given us is something a little bit different. It is a really, really nice product. They have done a really good job with how it changes the power characteristics of this bike. I think the power characteristics of the Tenere are already really good. It does two major things for me. The first one is it makes everything a bit smoother off the throttle, on the throttle. The character of the engine has changed a little bit, so it's a little bit more linear, a little bit smoother, but it's also strong. And both of those things together have kind of woken the bike up a little bit. It's just a really pleasant upgrade. And I kind of thought this would be the type of upgrade that you would only do if you wanted to really make your Tenere come alive. But actually, I think I would make this mod to this bike if I use this as a touring bike, as a weekend riding bike, because of how it changes the performance and how it makes it a nicer road bike as well as a nicer off-road bike. It's given a bit more pep, a little bit more liveliness, but it hasn't added any aggression at all. The only thing of note, and this is totally on me, is that I forgot to bring the sound baffle with us and it's loud. It's not obnoxious, but it is not quiet. It sounds like a rally bike. I'd put it in the region of 98 to 100 decibels. The Tenere already is not that quiet of an adventure bike, and now it's got a nice bark to it, but it is a bark. That's pretty much everything I've got to say about exhausts and fuel controllers. If you've enjoyed it and you want way more from Brake Magazine, you can check out the awesome Patreon community we've got in the links below or the web shop where we've got graphics and riding kit for sale. Next time out, we'll be comparing my Rally Raid product suspension to two other setups. I guarantee it is going to be worth coming for. See you in the next one.